Hey, 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 everybody. Happy Thursday. What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Seawall, checking in on our favorite day of the week, right? Thursdays. Always so much fun. And I am always so excited to get with you guys on a Thursday. Because there's always so much to talk about. Because when is there a dull moment in D.C. sports? Never. Okay? No matter what's going on, there's never a dull moment. So I have absolutely got to say what's up to my brother, Mazdak, Seawall Sports and Entertainment Chaplain. You all say what's up to Mazdak. He is a very important part of our team. Corey, I saw you checking in. Cameron Mingo has checked in. Listen, you guys, for the next 30 minutes, we are going to chat about all of the happenings in DC sports. Make sure you all are sharing this show with your DC sports loving family and friends. Okay? I'm going to give y'all an opportunity to make sure you get everybody up here in the room in our virtual couch. First of all, how's everybody feeling? How are you doing? Y'all, listen. We making it. Today is the first day of October. Can you believe it? As always, I want you guys to say what's up to my mom. My mother is watching, as she always is. So tonight, I want to do a short plug, as I've done in previous weeks, on the Goodwill Gestures Initiative. Then I want to do a quick shout out um, to Juan Soto. And of course... We have to chit chat about the Washington football team. Y'all ready? Let's go. I already see Cameron said, I'm feeling good. We're almost close to 2021. Yes, indeed, we are. Can you believe it? All right, almost, he, almost in a completely new year. You guys, listen, make sure, again, you are sharing the show with your D.C. sports loving family and friends because we got to get the dialogue going on this one. As always, you know, it's the NFL season, so we got a lot to talk about with the Washington football team. Quick plug for the Goodwill Gestures Initiative. You all know that I have mentioned this in previous weeks um, during the COVID-19 pandemic because there is still a pandemic going on outside, y'all. Do not forget, there is still a pandemic going on outside. I have partnered with some amazing people, uh, some of my great friends that I grew up with, went to school with, Misha Colbert. Um, Lawrence Bullard of Team Bullard and Calvin Henry, also known as Killer Cal from the Rare Essence Band. And what we've been doing since um, the beginning of the pandemic is we've been sending small donations to those families in need. So if you all know of anybody, please inbox me and let me know. If you know anybody whose household has been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, there are folks that are still looking for jobs. Um, there are folks that are still living in, in, in a lot of uncertainty um, as a result of the pandemic. So please just let me know. You can also reach out to the Goodwill Gestures Facebook page and the Goodwill Gestures Instagram page. All right. Cool. Okay, first things first, last week we mentioned the Nats because I think I had on my Nats championship shirt. So we had mentioned the Nats for a quick second just to say, hey, look, the Nats season is now over. They will not make the postseason, which is quite disappointing. I didn't get into just how disappointed that I am that the Nats have not made it this season into the postseason because it seemed like half 
the league made it into the postseason. So at the very least, we thought our, our Nationals should have been up in there. And they were not. But one major bright spot of this season, I don't want anybody to forget. I want everybody to always remember. We have a true dynamite gem in Juan Soto. Juan Soto on Sunday became the youngest batting champion in the National League. I think that's huge. Um, and he's the first national to ever win the batting title. Um, previously, when the Nats were the, the Expos, you know, they had two winners. But that still hasn't been anybody associated with the franchise since the 80s. So we're going to stick with the he's the first national, okay? Look, it remains to be seen whether or not we know that the Nats got to pay this guy. We know that they, they, they got to give him exactly what he is worth. But despite the very disappointing end to this season, understand something. We have something amazing in Juan Soto. And we absolutely cannot forget that. Um, the Nets went on a late season run. And, and those late season runs, it worked last year. It worked last season, but that didn't work this season. And I just didn't have an opportunity to really share last week. I think because we were just, it was so much going on. We were talking about so much to really just express how disappointed I was. But with Juan Soto winning, it's like, okay. Not saying that they had to come back, they meaning the Nationals come back and win the World Series again, although it would have been lovely. But what I am saying is they could have at least made it into the postseason. Especially would have been nice, given how amazing Juan Soto has been this season. So just keep your eye out on this story um, as he continues to be a Washington National. Because I absolutely think um, that the franchise needs to do all they can to keep a Juan Soto. Someone mentioned the other day, about giving him the Bryce Harper treatment. And I think we're dealing with a totally different um, scenario here. I'm hoping um, than what, than what um, the team was dealing with when Bryce Harper was here. Uh, Juan Soto was, was an active contributor to the Nats' success all last year amazing what he's done this year at his age and what he continues to do so let's hope that they don't let him walk and that they do what needs to be done to keep him on this roster for the long term as far as I'm concerned for his entire career so that is my spiel on the Nats and Juan Soto um yeah that did come up and I wanted to mention that because I felt like it was important and we had to talk about it so, got to say what's up to the 85 South Fan Club. Randall, I saw you check in. Got to say what's up. Got to also say what's up. So, all the team members are on. Got to say what's up to Sherrod, the originator, Oliphant. Y'all got to say what's up to the originator. And Wallace, I see you checking in as well. So, we got a few more moments to talk about. Guess guess who? Guess who we're we talking about? The Washington football team. So if you are a Washington football team fan, I need you to check in right now. I need to let, let me know that you are here. Check in with a love emoji, a like emoji, a fire emoji in the comments. Something. Because we got a few things we need to talk about. And we just going into week four. Okay? We're going to say what's up to Lydell too. So... While you all are checking in, have you heard today the podcast with Governor Larry Hogan? He was on, let me, let me make sure I get it right. He was on the Washington Football Talk podcast. There was a lot to be said today on the podcast by Governor, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan about the, the next location for the Washington football team. Um, Larry Hogan was very open and honest about wanting 
the team to stay in Maryland. Um, he was sharing all sorts of information today. I was like, well, well, what do you know? Manny, I see you. What's up? Hey, Manny. So he was even, I, I have to share the reports from this because I was like, wow. He even went back to say that when he was first elected governor in 2014, he spoke with Daniel Snyder about building a new stadium near the harbor development. They had started making progress towards construction, but then the deal got off track after some local officials were unsure about the location. And then the team started negotiating with DC. Um, Interesting, all interesting. Um, there's definitely reports about comments from team president Jason Wright, who um, spoke very highly of Prince George's County and no matter what happens, wants to keep the connection with PG County. You all know I'm happy to hear that. I'm PG County born and raised, so um, I was happy to hear, hear that. Um, there has been no site selected, so let's be clear. There has been, there's not been a site selected, um, but Jason Wright was quoted on saying this, the folks in Maryland are really aligned with how I want to build the stadium, Wright said, the money that goes into this stadium goes back into the economy in an inclusive way. Um, very interesting. I don't know if you all have any thoughts, um. On that, I see, Wallace, that you've already commented on the topic that Hogan needs to go on and give Snyder that land over by the National Harbor. Um, definitely seems like, like an option, and it seems like an option that was already being pursued um, until things came from a halt. But to that point again, um, Larry Hogan was quoted in saying, maybe we can still put that, that together, but I, would, but I absolutely would love to see them down across from the National Harbor with all the other entertainment and restaurants and casino. Remains to be seen, remains to be seen. Um, getting there, the transportation, getting there. Um, would, would, would be a snag, you know, to build a metro. We know at the current location, Morgan Boulevard is right there. So that does help, um, with folks being able to have that access. So we'll see what happens. This was a podcast again with Washington football talk that was today. Um, so that's some interesting news and some interesting information that just came out just today. So, Again, that's a topic that's always up for discussion, but it sounds like Maryland is being very clear, Governor Hogan, absolutely abundantly clear that he wants to see the stadium stay in Maryland. We'll see. I'm fine with it either way. My, 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 of course, would want it to, to be RFK, right? Um, so th those, those were discussions and that they were that they were having but hey dc maryland sounds like they want to make some progress again and and bringing those conversations back up and keeping it not just in maryland but in prince george's county specifically so something else to keep tracking and something for else to keep talking about all right so let's get on with Last week's game. Let's go on and talk about last week's game, y'all. I need all of my Washington football team fans to check in and let me know exactly one word. Y'all know I like to play the one word game with you guys. One word that describes last Sunday's game versus the Cleveland Browns. What's one word? Oh, May's already started. Ugh. One word. Guess there are no words, huh, Manny? You just said I can't even, you know. One word that describes last Sunday's game versus the Cleveland Browns. Mad, ugly, pathetic, disappointing. You know, 
let me just say this. It's so, it's so funny, right? Because just last week when we all gathered together virtually last Thursday, we talked about this. We talked about Washington needed, needing to, to, to start out fast. No more of that wasting the whole first half away and letting the game get out of control. You know, let's, let's open up the playbook a bit. Let's get some things going on offense. Continue the defense to be aggressive. And we saw, we saw that. We saw that. The first quarter was, was decent. It was good. Um, as Sharad says, it got demoralizing. I see that right there. Um, and then it just took a turn for the worse. And here was the thing. I don't know about you all, but I saw and sister a debacle. You know, that's my word, a flat out debacle. I started to see when it was getting ready to get bad. I said, oh, this is this is going to get bad. And even that was around the second quarter. OK, so at the end of the second quarter, I said this could get bad. And the thing that's so interesting was that even when it looked really grim, the team was still very much still in the game. Washington was still in the game. If we're being totally fair, the team was still able to bounce back from critical mistakes and score points and, and still have some movement and move down the field. And then came the fourth quarter. <sighs> that was really sad. It was really something else. It was all of the words that you all have written down in the comments. Um, Harry, good to see you. Glad that you joined us. The offensive line stopped being consistent. I wholeheartedly agree. We have to mention that I even for a moment felt, we go back to the first half, because we have to bring up losing Matt Ioannidis. That hurts. That hurts so much. Um, I said, what? That, that was a huge, that was a huge loss. Um, losing Matt Ioannidis. I think with Chase Young, of course, of course, who wants to lose? Who wants to lose Matt Ioannidis? Who definitely, does? nobody wants to lose uh, uh, Chase Young. And when both of, they, both of them went out, the defense was still holding up as much as they could. But the hard truth is, y'all, how, how can the defense hold up when they're playing the entire game? Because of the costly turnovers on offense, the defense spent, so much time on the field and and it's and it's and it's hard because they've been spending a lot of time on the field so far all season but a game like sunday you just you you can't you can't it's 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 not you can't have longevity that way when you have a team in a in a in a, in a, in a offense or defense that is staying on the field that long. That's too long. Too long. Especially when they're out there because it's your fault. And it's just costly, unnecessary turnovers. Um, we definitely saw Montez Sweat do what Montez Sweat does. Exactly how we saw Montez Sweat step up in that game is exactly how he should be used in every game. That's exact. That's his strength. He's a defensive end that runs like a four-four. Get after the quarterback. That's what you want him to do. It was amazing to see. Splendid. I loved every moment and watching him do that. Um, but he can't do it all day. All of them. They can't. They can't be out there all day like that. It's. 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 It's troubling because 
when the offense still was able to recover from their mistakes, even when they recovered, they were still the reason why the team ended up with that L. That, that's what I'm going to go ahead and say. Um, if there wasn't so many costly mistakes on offense, Washington football absolutely had a chance to win that football game. They should not have lost in the manner that they did. And the reason why they lost in that manner was because of the costly mistakes. Now, I want you all to tell me the truth. We're going to have we're going to have a moment of truth. Can we have a moment of truth here on coaching from the couch? I want a moment of truth. I want you all to tell me the truth. What do, don't, don't answer this question with your heart. Don't answer this question with your feelings. I want you to be absolutely objective. What do your eyes tell you about Dwayne Haskins? What do your eyes tell you about Dwayne Haskins? And while you all are, are commenting about that, I definitely hear you. The defense is that secondary. At this point, it's not just Troy Apke. The secondary is not playing well. Um, Landon Collins has not played well. Let's tell the truth. Landon Collins has not played well. No, Troy Apke has not, but neither has Landon Collins. And on Sunday, Troy Apke might have, been, might have just played better than Landon, if we're being completely honest and objective. So... Others are saying he needs more experience. Give the man time. Um, again, I'm waiting. So what do your eyes tell you about Haskins? Here, here's what I'm going to say. Ron, has, Ron Rivera has made it clear. I think he knows exactly who he has on his roster. And with that being said... And I love what you're saying, Stephen. It's costly mistakes. Yes, we know the offensive line is struggling. We know that there's lack of offensive weapons. We know that Dwayne needs to be coached up. But we also know that Dwayne needs to play better. And that's what folks need to just say it out loud to get it off your chest. We all want to... Believe in the players, believe in the team, all of those things. But but there needs to be work all the way around. And I want you all to say what's up to my godmother, my aunt, my aunt sis. So say what's up to her because she's chiming in because she's a diehard Washington football team fan, just like all the rest of us. So with that being said, yes, still very early. Absolutely still very early in his career, but I'm going to say this out loud to you all. And I hope you all hear me when I say this. They're giving him the opportunities. They're going to stick by him, but mistakes and poor decision making and the display that we all saw on Sunday, he shouldn't do that again. He flat out can't do it again. He cannot do that. Again, we need to see smarter decisions, confident decisions. That's what needs to be seen. Listen, we know, because here's the, here's the whole reality, y'all. Just like Dwayne has limited experience, so does some of that O-line. So, so do the wide receivers. Same thing we got going on with Troy Apke on defense. And others that were, and Cole Holcomb. That, so here's my thing. And here's where I had to, even for myself, say, okay, if Dwayne gets a pass, so does everybody else. If Dwayne is in development, so is everybody else. A lot of young, raw talent on the team. And the coaches got to get as much film as they can. They don't have a lot of film. And so I even had to say, for, for those of us, myself included, who are like, uh-uh, Troy Apke got to go. I can't deal with it. Well, Troy Apke's probably played the same amount of time 
as Haskins. So guess what? If we want Haskins to take a minute, then so does Troy Apke. So he's got to show a difference this week. Last week, and here's the other thing that I'm going to be honest, while we're all talking right now, we're seeing regression. And that's never good. You can have a bad game here and there, but you can't, you shouldn't, when we know you're in a, you're trying to develop, you're trying to progress. Everybody on here wants to see Dwayne Haskins do well. Everybody. Absolutely everybody. But the quarterback is the leader. And there were some costly mistakes made on Sunday that definitely were contributors to the overall outcome of the game. So development is not, it's, we got to use that same line for everybody. The same story's got to be told for everybody. If that's the case, we'll see, hopefully, progression this week. Because that was, that was regression all the way down to a whole nother level. That I was like, well, I don't, what do we, what? I mean, this is kind of, this is, this is not good. Because, and here's why I say regression, Wallace. Because each week. There's been an issue from week one to week three when you can do the same thing you did in week one and stay consistent. You go from you go from no turnovers to four. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. So. In my opinion, that's that's a lot when you when you are continuing to practice. So, in continuing to be coached up and developed. So, we're going to continue to see. I want to see the progression. I want to see the better, the better decision making. We all do. But we also got to trust our eyes and know what, we, what we're looking at, what we're watching. So, again, I will still say, if it's going to be development and progression for him, for all of the young guys on the team, and Ron Rivera has said it, they, it's, it's, that means we got to do, we got to keep it, we got to say development for everybody, not just him. Because it is a young team. It's absolutely a young team full of raw talent. Now this week, this week, We'll see against a Ravens team that, that is very good. And also with two quarterbacks that have something to prove. This is where I really get excited in a moment like this because it also becomes a, who are you in the face of adversity? You all have heard me say this before. Who are you in the face of adversity? And right now, Dwayne Haskins has something to prove. Every, everybody has something to prove. When you are coming back from such a bad loss, when you're coming back from a target being on your back, when you're coming back from so many of the individual turnovers being on you. So I'm, I am expecting to see a different Dwayne Haskins. I mean, we can always go back to no turnovers. We could always go back to that, which would be great, which would be awesome because we know because some of these weren't forced turnovers. It wasn't that the defense was just all over the place and all and all on him. So we got to continue to watch the progression of just not Dwayne. Of all the other young players on this team. Because it's the truth. There's not a lot of tape on them. They do not have a lot of experience playing at the professional level. So you have to just be patient. Because here's the thing. You, we can all be patient 
and still expect to see progress. That's what I'm saying. We can all be patient and still expect to see progression. Now we're getting into week four. Preseason is over. Because once you get into the fourth game of the preseason, guess what? The starters are playing anyway. They're not playing anyway. So now I'm like, okay, preseason is up. It's showtime now. Now let's see what happens against a Ravens team that's still good. Yes, they lost the, the Monday night to the Kansas City Chiefs, but that doesn't mean that they're not good. So keep all those things in mind. I was not happy. None of us were with Sunday's game. It was bad. It wasn't good at all. Let's just be honest. But everybody, no more preseason. We, we, don't have, we don't have preseason excuses no more, okay? Preseason over. Week four, let's get it going. And I'm not saying that you have to come up with a win every week, but let's, let's, get, let's hop to it because I'm going to go back to this point because I think it's very, very important. The defense is not going to hold up for the full season having to be on the field all day long. That's not going to work. They need to get rest during the game. They need, to, they need to get themselves antied up. They can't be out there all day long. We have to keep that in mind. The defense is absolutely what's keeping the team even in the game. Right? But the offense got to stay on the field to get the ball down the field and score seven. I'm going to let that be that. So. Y'all, how do we how do we already get to eight o'clock? Already talking about the Washington football team. That does it every single time. But before we go, are there any bold predictions for this Sunday's game? Bold predictions. Drop them in the comments. Drop them in the comments because the season is still long, y'all. The season is still long. We still got a long way to go. So any bold predictions? Any bold predictions? Any? Or everybody just say we just we just want to win at this point. That's right, Godma. She just you just want to win. Just a win would be nice. Nothing bold. Just a win would be spectacular. Listen, you guys. I must say. Talking to you all is the highlight of my week. And I hope you all enjoy yourselves as well. So you guys, listen, make sure you are sharing the show with your DC sports loving family and friends. We're getting ready to close out for the evening. Before I go, let me say this. I was I looked at the calendar and saw that um, today is October the 1st. And... Today is technically the second anniversary. The second anniversary is actually October the 4th, which is on Sunday. But it's the second anniversary of this show, Coaching from the Couch. We've been doing this for two years, you guys. Two whole years we've been doing this. And the only times, praise God, that we've had to not do a show, it's been sports related. I think we didn't do a show because of the Washington football team draft party. The Wizards had a draft party when the Mystics went on their championship run, um, when I was down in Super Bowl. Um, so, and I think it was something else, but it, it was all sports related. And other than that, you all are here with us every single Thursday to talk DC sports. I appreciate you all. I thank you all so very much. This is so much fun. You have no idea. And we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going as, as, as long as DC Sports keeps playing, okay? So, listen, I appreciate you all so much. God bless y'all so very much. Shout out to my mom who has a birthday next week. So, next week, we'll celebrate her birthday because her birthday is next Wednesday. Um, but shout out to my, my amazing team, Joy Butler, that moderates this chat every single week. 
Shout out to her. Shout out to Sherrod, the originator of Oliphant, that you read all of his amazing articles. Mazdak, Merrick, who is the chaplain, who continuously, all the time, prays for this team. So thank you all so very much. Jim from Nashville. Hey! So you guys, seriously, thank you. It is a blessing. It is an honor. And I will see you guys next week.